Color contrast is an incredibly important way of looking at photography. It's everything in the scene that I'm in. I haven't found many poppies uh, this year yet. Um, we're in this field here where the margin is really lovely and there's a field on the other side of the road as well where there's a similar margin. It's just a lovely expanse, what well, narrow expanse of red, it's, it's gorgeous. Now this, uh, this area of the UK uh, is locally called poppy land. Uh, it's, yeah, well, I, you can probably guess why. So today we've come out very specifically uh, to this field, the one over there, and uh, one just over the brow of the hill, I believe, is completely full of poppies. This particular point here, I have a lovely view of the sea. It's a little layered, there's a hedge, uh, there's some dilapidated barns or something, I'm not sure quite what it is down there. Uh, often looked at it, often wondered what it was, not sure, may walk to that if we can. Um, and I thought, no, we've, we've got to come here, we've got to shoot these, and I'm shooting um, colour contrast. It's just literally colour contrast, and I'm hoping it's going to be quite a shot. Trying to avoid a set of uh, power lines going across here for no particular reason other than I don't want to have to clone them out. So I've come on the other side of the road uh, and the uh, margin of poppies here is a little bit thicker and uh, more, uh, more glorious than the other side. You can probably see over there as well, lovely margin there also. It's very nice. Over here I think I've got a better shot uh, of this barn. Although some of the grasses in the poppies here are a little more lengthened, they're taller. I think they're picking up the light a bit. Uh, so whether or not this is a better shot, I'm not sure. But there is so much light. Uh, I'm at 90 degrees to the sun, so I am tempted to put the polarizer on here. Uh, uh, I don't know. And if I look somewhat pasty from the last shot, it's not me mucking about with the uh, uh, with the exposure, uh, I've had to uh, had a bath in uh, uh, suntan lotion, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's bright as you like, and, and and God, it's hot. Let's see whether I can get a shot here. You know what? Though, looking through the viewfinder allows me to really kind of just block out any extraneous. Uh, stuff that's in that, that I could see uh, beforehand. Always use the viewfinder if you can. Uh, I'm very lazy with it. I keep preaching to use the viewfinder, and so often you see me not. Uh, yeah, um, I know the problem. I just don't seem to like the solution, and the solution is more movement on my part. Uh, I'm not built for more movement. I mean, what, I was never built for more movement. I might, I'm tempted to change lens because I'm getting too much of the, uh, the, the unsown margin of the field. And having changed lens, I still haven't put a bloody polarizer on. Some people are beyond help. And you see, I'm doing it again. I'm using the screen rather than getting lower. Um, but I am only just framing up because the one thing that's clear now with a longer zoom or a longer focal length is I'm gonna have to focus stack this, hence this. I should have done this before. I just lazy i'll tell you what though it's not a bad shot quite like that it does make quite a difference do i want to focus stack this i'm at f13 i knew it's never going to be the greatest shot so i've been uh, a little slapdash about it if this is any good 
<laughs> and it'll be half decent. I'll put it on screen. Let me know what you think. There's always a trade-off showing images like this on any kind of screen because of course I've got no control over what screen you're looking at this on. If it's a huge screen, you'll see some of the details of the poppies in the foreground. If it's a phone, you haven't got a chance. And it's one of the principal reasons I put up these zoomed in images. Anyway, tell me what you think of the image and uh, leave a like and maybe subscribe and don't forget, click the bell as well. It really isn't going to take you long to work out that this is far more shoot about poppies than blue sky colour contrast but, uh, but yeah kind of stick with it will you uh, I've got here a shot that I'm framing up I, I've just moved the tripod I've got a few shots beforehand which probably aren't that good uh, uh, but I have uh, one poppy lots of seed heads uh, up ahead here that are poking their heads up above this uh, this wheat crop is it wheat or barley I don't know I mean I've, I've keep saying this in re videos recently no one's telling me um, and uh, I haven't learned, so uh, stick something down in the comments if you think you know what this is, please. Actually, stick something down in the comments if you don't know what it is. I mean, you could just say, I don't know what it is either, but here's a comment. Give it a go, you might like it. I was shot over here a little uh, while ago, looking more into the, uh, the crop, and you can probably see we're on the margin still. I'm scratching my face here. I think I've been bitten by a bloody horsefly. Uh, and I hate horseflies. If anyone's ever been bitten by a horsefly, you come up with this bloody great big hard sodding lump. And uh, I would hate to uh, lose my good looks for a week or so. In actual fact, it will probably make shaving really bloody difficult as well. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm waffling. I've got the camera lowered down. There's this poppy ahead that is uh, sticking itself up. And I might just pull round a, a little more because behind it we've got some poppies as well and I want to throw those into soft focus maybe even softer than I've got it there uh, F5 perhaps and bang we're getting a thousandth of a second here which is rather nice uh, so <laughs> I'm really pushing this F2.8 to really do the soft pull down a little bit more. You can see the breeze is really quite uh, quite fierce as well. I'm not sure about coming down too much. Let's tighten that up. If I come down too much I end up with the uh, the risk of the sky getting into it, which I don't want. Uh, I'm looking purely at colour contrast on a very bright day. See I'm really working this in now. Uh, I Down to the kind of the red and green uh, here and arguably that I need to be even higher I think let's pull it up here I may even have to adjust the legs ah, this is the one thing I didn't want to do is get up uh, this breeze is making things a touch awkward I think that last shot is rather nice but I suspect also it's going to end up being a square crop if any of those have come out uh, anywhere half like I'd like them to I'll pop a few on screen now do let me know what you think part one of the video I was talking about colour contrast and I shall continue to talk about colour contrast but you will see we're now in a very different place in very different conditions. Way back when uh, I shot the first part of this we were talking very much about uh, blue sky colour contrast and uh, yeah, kind of stuff like that and primarily You'll see why I said primarily in a second. We were talking about uh, red, greens and blues. Actually, I wasn't talking about them, but that's what I was shooting. It was red, greens and blues, primary colours. Uh, and that's the kind of thing you get on a blue sky summer's day. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that you can see that we have now. It's quite over overcast, and you may well also notice that there's spits and spots of rain coming on the lens. I'm going to have to wipe it every now and again. We've still got colour contrast. We're in a, a garden and you can see just 
how we've still got primary color contrasts, uh, got some purples there. Obviously, we've got a lot of uh, tonal contrast here as well. But there's kind of color and tonal contrast everywhere you look, and you don't have to be on a remarkably bright day in order to, uh, to, to experience these, uh, I won't call them challenges, they're not challenges. You only have to be on a bright day in order to experience uh, these kind of contrasts. And it's these kind of contrasts that we need to put into photographs to help people see what's there. Um, how can I elaborate on that? It's because I'm here and I've got 3D vision, every time I move past something, I can see its relationship with everything else around it change. We can't do that in two dimensions on a photograph, so we have to be very careful about what we shoot and how we shoot it. We've got to create those layers, those dimensions, uh, whilst there's one of them missing. So here I've found a shot that's got some colour contrast, a bit of tonal contrast, and it's not the kind of colour contrast that we've been talking about or experiencing in this video beforehand. They're not kind of opposite sides of the, the colour wheel and such. So kind of complementary but but different enough to work and, ex, you know, and really kind of um, explore this idea more and uh, while well, you're looking at it but you can't see what it's set against so it's these two poppy seed heads see I can't get away from poppies um, poppies are gorgeous no matter what stage of their uh, flowering uh, they're at and uh, the these beautiful beautiful seed heads are, are great but what it's set against is this green and purple carpet of sage and it's absolutely lovely so the intention is to shoot these at a, uh, a really wide open aperture so that the background is really just a mass of kind of mottled color rather than anything sharp these two heads are at slightly different planes here and they're moving so I don't try to shoot them uh, with any kind of um, focus stacking because I'm just not going to be able to achieve it because the breeze is uh, coming in uh, and out and they're just moving around too much. Although every now and again they become static as they've become now, which is an absolute touch of irony, isn't it? Come on. And now they're moving again. I have to shoot relatively high looking down because uh, if I shoot kind of more through it, I don't get the background. The question now is, how soft do I want that uh, that second one? Um, it would be nice if both of them were sharp, but I don't think I'm going to achieve it. Um, uh, so I faffed around a little bit uh, in the end. I've got a series of uh, shots. I'll put up whichever one I think is the nicest, and uh, you can tell me what you think of it. And please do tell me what you think of it. And I'll tell you something else. While I've been here... I've spotted something else. Beautiful, beautiful colour contrast. Yeah, you're going to like this. And change position. Yeah, this other shot is just beside it and you wouldn't believe it, but it's still a shot of a poppy. I know! And in this composition, I've got the beautiful reds and greens of the cacosmia being used to really emphasize the lightness and brightness of what I think are echinops. You see I'm multi-talented. I do know what some plants are, unlike most trees. Along with wheat and barley, I've no idea how to differentiate those. Did you comment below? I bet you didn't. Yes, I know I got it wrong. It's a giant sea holly. It's really also a very good idea to get out in gardens like this when the weather isn't bright and sunny, when the conditions are perhaps suboptimal for ordinary landscape type photography. Get out into places like this where you've got overcast skies, where 
uh, perhaps it's raining a little bit, uh, be prepared to get a bit wet and uh, you will find that the colours of some of these, uh, these plants absolutely zing. This is perhaps a more strange one and anything but perfect flowers, but we've got some bedraggled oxide daisies or, or something. I'm not sure what these are, but they're daisies of some description. And just this hand rail from the steps and everything down here. And what's working here is the, the colour and luminosity contrast between the, the brightness of the daisy, which, yeah, isn't perfect because, yeah, these flowers are well beyond their best. The relatively dark surroundings around them, I don't know whether this works. I quite like it in the back of the camera, uh, but it might be just that little bit too confusing uh, when you get it kind of completely isolated. It's, it's really difficult sometimes, isn't it? Because what you see in the back of the camera can be pretty... Um, well, pretty. It can be pretty, uh, but it can be very deceiving. I can't look through the uh, the viewfinder very much because um, it's so damp and such here that at the minute the viewfinder is completely obliterated with um, condensation. Because I really do want to throw the background very much into uh, very soft focus. Uh, I could arguably, I suppose, get closer to them and shoot. Uh, shoot them closer, therefore throwing the background even further out. But I, I think, I think I quite like this. Um, it might not work. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. This is probably my favourite of the whole shoot, or oh, two shoots. It's simple. It's rustic. I like the composition. I like the way I've positioned the handrail running diagonally through. Works well for me. What do you think? I hope that's given you some ideas for going out and shooting in less than perfect conditions, looking for colour contrast. It's not just colour contrast, of course, it's luminosity contrast. And if you want some more ideas for going out and shooting in blue sky, because we've probably still got some left, you know, summer's not over yet, check out this video here. See you soon.